You never ask for something you don't need. You know, the only time you ask for stuff is when you really need it. Somebody offers you food and you're not hungry. Or there's food being presented. And the guy's saying, whoever needs some water, I'll give him some water. And you're not thirsty. Are you going to ask for it? No. Who is really going to ask for guidance? Really, really, internally, really going to beg for guidance? Who's that going to be? The one who feels the need for it. If I feel like I can make my own decisions, I'm a free person, I'm a smart guy, I'm pretty intelligent, I went to college, I can make my own decisions, I'm not dumb, I don't need a lot to guide every one of my decisions, then you will make salah, but that salah will not be a request for guidance. It'll just be practice. It'll just be something you do without even thinking about what you're doing. Right? Now Allah says, number one, that the Qur'an is guidance. The two most important terms we should know about the Qur'an, most important terms, when it comes to our personal relationship with the Qur'an, are two terms. Huda. Huda means what? Guidance. Okay. Qur'an itself is guidance. And the second term, dhikr. In huwa illa dhikrun. Kalla innaha tadhkira. Wa dhikra lil-mu'min. Fadhakkir inna fa'ati dhikra. Wa dhakkir bil-Qur'ani man yakhafu wa'id. Dhakkir, dhikr. Remembrance, remembrance, remembrance. The idea being, guidance is something that is fulfilled. You will be misguided unless you are constantly what? Reminded. The mechanism by which we are guided is remembrance. Dhikr, jazakallah khairan. Is dhikr. So, if that's the case, we are to remember Allah, Allah's guidance, which is Qur'an. And we are to remind ourselves of this Qur'an. And we need that guidance every single day. So Allah, in His profound wisdom, gives us this thing called salah. And He calls this salah, He says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Establish salah to remember me. Now what's the longest part of salah? What's the longest part of the prayer? Standing, qiyam. What do we do in qiyam? We begin by the fatiha, which is a, is a request for what? Guidance. And then as a response to that request, what do we recite? We recite Qur'an. We recite the guidance. First you ask for guidance, then you recite something from the guidance. That's what we do. It is our personal therapy with Allah. It is our personal counsel with Allah. Every time we stand in salah. Every time. Every time. And you know when this relationship of pursuing guidance in the prayer, when that's dead, when that's not there, even though you're praying, your prayers have become empty, and nobody can judge that except you. Really, nobody can judge, right? You understand what's being recited, you know the tajweed, you know the makharij, the ghunna was perfect, the qalqala was just right, right? You didn't mess up on any ayat, you remembered all of them, you even corrected the imam on one, you know, you gave him luqba in one place. It was perfect, you stood the right way, you looked in the right place, your ruku was perfect 90 degree angle, everything was perfect, except there was one thing missing. The only thing missing in this prayer was you weren't asking really for guidance. And that's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. We need help. The first, the first we need to acknowledge that we need guidance. And we acknowledge that because the Messenger of Allah is begging for guidance every day wasallam. So if we are to emulate him, we beg for guidance too. We beg for guidance also. Second, we acknowledge this Qur'an, it can be understood. It can be understood. But we need to appreciate that it's not just an intellectual exercise. It's not just information. You can learn tafsir and say, what does Qatada radiallahu anhu say? What does Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu say? What does Ibn, Ibn Tafsir ibn Kathir say? What does Al-Qurtubi say? What does Al-Tabari say about this ayah? You can read all of that. But if you forget why you're reading it, why are you reading it? Guidance. Guidance. You need help. You need counsel. To give you, uh, this part of my talk is going to sound a little crazy, so you got to bear with me, okay? The Qur'an has stories. Stories of the Prophets. The story of Adam alayhi salam. The story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Stories. On the one hand, you all have the knowledge of those stories. There's knowledge of those stories. But does the Qur'an repeat the stories? It does. The Qur'an is not a book of knowledge first. Because if it was a book of knowledge, it wouldn't repeat itself. In a book of knowledge, how many times do you have to give the information? 
once. And if need be, say, refer back to page 30. You don't have to say it again. Allah says things over and over and over and over again. Another Western criticism of Qur'an, it's too repetitive. But Allah is calling the Qur'an what? Reminder. And the purpose of reminder is to tell you something you already know. And the thing that Allah reminds of us the most in the Qur'an is the thing we tend to forget the most. The things that are the hardest to internalize are the things that are mentioned the most in the Qur'an. Like the taqwa of Allah, the fear and consciousness and regard of Allah is mentioned over a couple of hundred times in the Qur'an. If that's a commandment, it just had to be mentioned once. But ittaqullah, 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 wattaqullah, fattaqullah. Right? Why so much taqwa? Because what is the thing we lose first? <laughs> it's taqwa. We forget. We don't, we're not in awe and regarded and, and careful of what we need to do when we acknowledge Allah's power. We're not careful. So we need to be reminded. This world is bombarding us all the time. You're driving down the neighborhood, you say, wow, that house is nice. I don't know why I bought the one that was 200 square feet less in size. And you go to somebody else's house and, and you remind, you know, you and your wife are appreciating the curtains they have and they match the, the couch so much better. So you're like, man, we need to get a new carpet. Did you see their backyard? Oh, that's a nice driveway. Look at this, I renovated our new game room. Right? You're obsessed with things in your house. You're obsessed with things about your car. This world bombards us. And what do you lose sight of when you're constantly thinking about this world? The next world. So what does Allah do all the time? Reminds you of the next world. Because you don't have to be told, worry about your dunya. Take care of it. You're not being materialistic enough. <laughs> Everybody's doing that enough. What are they not doing enough? Concerning themselves with the next, the next life. The next world. So it's repeated often. Anyhow, the stories in the Qur'an. Everybody knows the story of Adam alayhi salam? Now I'll give you, just, just as a matter of perspective, right? I'm going to present to you this story from the point of view of knowledge, and then from the point of view of guidance, just so you can see a comparison. We need the knowledge, but we also need the guidance, right? In this story, who's the ultimate bad guy? Shaitan, Iblis, is the bad guy. And he is being contrasted with which human being? Adam alayhi salam. Who are some other people or characters in the story? Is our mother? Hawa? Who else? The angels? Of course, Allah azza wa Okay? We all know what happened. We all know what happened. I'm not going to tell you the story because you know the story. I'm going to tell you another story. Here's how it goes. There's a, you work at a company as an intern. You're like a junior in college and you get an internship. And this was about 35 years ago. You graduated, you got a full-time job at that company. After you got a full-time job at that company, a couple of years later you got into management. Then you got into regional management. Then like district management. Then like domestic management. Now you're international. And you kept moving up the corporate ladder. 35 years later you're the senior vice president of this company. You started where? Intern. And now you're VP. Okay, VP. You've got the biggest office, all the way up on the top floor of the corporate building. The only one above you is who? The owner. the owner, the president. The president walks in with this high school kid one day. Okay, this kid's like looking around, chewing gum. Right? Freshman in high school. Kid. President walks in and says, um, yeah, this is our new senior VP. And uh, you need to get him some coffee. <laughs> 